Now just behind me here is the Mahoosive LG 34UM95P monitor and in this video I'm going to tell you about how awesome it is. This video is sponsored by Hotspot Shield, a VPN to protect your privacy, data and freedom to browse censored websites. So what you're actually getting with the LG 34UM95P is a 34 inch ultra wide screen with a 21.9 aspect ratio. Now previously when you had this sort of aspect ratio on a computer screen, you were seemingly gaining screen real estate, but because of the low vertical resolution, which on previous models and on smaller versions of this is in fact 1080 pixels, you weren't really gaining that much. With this particular monitor, you're getting a 34 inch screen, but with a 3440 by 1440 resolution. So a really high resolution IPS quality display. Now, for want of trying to explain this in simpler terms, think of this as one and a half widescreen monitors, but without a bezel going down the middle. So before I show you how you can use all of this screen real estate, I want to really compliment LG on their awesome on-screen menu. Now you access this via a small joystick control under the centre portion of the screen here, and moving it in any direction pulls up this initial wheel where you can select various options. Let's go into the main menu, and you'll see here that you can access brightness, contrast, volume, the input, and the ratio. We go down one option, and we've also got a calibration function here. This is very important because the calibration is actually stored on the monitor itself rather than on a software profile. And I'll come onto that in a separate video. Then we've got some picture functions where you can actually run two inputs side by side, effectively giving you two separate monitors. Then we've also got some screen options here for both picture and color. And then some additional settings options like automatic standby time, lock in the on-screen display. And then last but not least, we've got a reset option. So now let's take a look around the back of the screen to see what sort of inputs and connectivity we've got. So on the back of this massive LG monitor, we have got a plethora of inputs and outputs. Starting off on the left-hand side here, we've got an HDMI input. We've got the input for the power supply, a master on-off switch, output for headphones, a second HDMI input, and then we've also got display port and then two Thunderbolt ports. Now these are very important. This is what ultimately makes this very compatible with the Apple line of computers. One of these Thunderbolt ports is to connect your Mac, and then the other one is for daisy chaining other devices. Then we've got a USB upstream port and then three USB ports here. Now don't forget we've also got a Kensington lock so we can tether this to a desk. Now to finish things off, we have got this really nice floating stand on the bottom made of clear perspex. It makes it look as though the monitor is actually floating in space, but it does have its downsides. You can tilt the monitor up and down, but there are only two height adjustments and you have to disassemble the base to make it either higher or lower. Now to counteract this, we have got a standard visa mount on the back. So you can mount this to a wall or perhaps to a desk monitor arm. So now I just want to show you how you can use all of this awesome screen real estate. The LG monitor is currently connected to a late 2013 Mac Pro via that Thunderbolt connection. So that enables me to daisy chain extra devices out of the back of the monitor. And it's running at full 3440 by 1440 resolution. You'll see here that I've got four windows open for organizing files. And on the right hand side, I've still got room for my Twitter client to be running. If I move across to this screen, this is one of the main benefits of this format screen and a big selling point, which was the deciding factor of me putting this into the editing room. On Final Cut Pro 10 or indeed any video editor, I can see pretty much all of my timeline here with minimal scrolling. When you're working on large projects, this is a real time saver. And then last but not least, you can see here that I have got my browser running just here, and then I've still got plenty of room to do photo editing in Photoshop on this right-hand panel. Now, with regards to screen clarity, brightness, contrast, color accuracy, etc., this is an IPS display. It's got superb viewing angles. The current brightness is set to seven 
and that's out of a possible 100. So you can see just how bright this screen would go. In fact, it's, it's pretty much unusable at full brightness. It's too bright to use for work like this. With regards to color accuracy, well, it's been calibrated and that makes a whole lot of difference. It is just a superb display in every respect. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do hit that like button. Please do share a link to the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you all in the next one. Thank you very much for watching my video. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, there are two places you can find the subscribe button. On the main channel page, it's just up here in the top right hand corner. If you're on a video watch page, then you'll find it just underneath the video you've been watching. Click on the subscribe button and that means that you are now subscribed to the Geekanoids channel. But there is one more step you must take. Click on the little cog icon next to the subscribed button, put a tick in the send me updates box and click save. Job done. Thank you very much for watching again. I'll see you next time.